So uh, today we're we're here at uh, Lorenzo de Puy's um, uh, exhibition that's just opened at uh, the Gallery Art Placement, and the exhibition is called "En Marchant Walk Your Children to School," um, which is kind of an unusual title. And uh, maybe you could uh, give us a little bit of background on what uh, on what you were thinking when you uh, when you called the show. Well, uh, to, first of all, it's, it's difficult to give a, a title to a show, and I always struggle with that. So when I came up with the opportunity or the obligation to give a title to the show, I thought, well, uh, my ideas, if you like, seem to happen to me outside the studio when I least expect it. When I'm, for example, in this situation, walking my children to school, uh, I'd have some sort of Composition that would come to mind. It is always a little bit of a surprise, but uh, when I get into the studio, I would use some of those sort of uh, ideas to, to start paintings with. Uh, looking at some of the smaller works in the show, um, one thing that occurs to me is is there's a um, maybe more of a kind of overt conversation in the smaller works to art history and particularly to kind of early abstraction, like in an obvious way, kind of going back to Cubism. Yeah. But, but maybe more specifically going back to sort of 1940s, 50s, early abstraction, sort of at the point where uh, a lot of artists were abstracting from nature, mm -hmm. and where there is this sort of latent subject matter. I'm thinking even if you look locally, there's artists like um, like Eli Bornstein's early watercolors, yeah. like, like late 1950s, um, or even Otto Rogers' work, early work from like the early 60s. Yeah. And I wonder if that's a kind of conscious thing, or if, if you in your mind have a kind of dialogue with that, with those people and with that sort of time period, and uh, yeah. how that plays into your, okay. into your thinking. Well, it's certainly a period that's always really interested me. I don't know. I, whether I was thinking about it or not, when I was making these paintings, but I've always thought uh, uh, Mark Toby, Jackson Pollock, uh, that, that you know, when they first started doing those overall paintings, uh, mm -hmm. I thought that was a real step forward in the history of art, you know, mm -hmm. getting away from a central focus. And uh, so I've looked at those people a real lot throughout my life, and uh, I, to this day I get really excited when I see their, their stuff, you know. Um, I don't know, when I paint, I guess it's always a, 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 a small step forward from the last painting. So I'm, I'm thinking more of that than the history of art, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I'm sure it's there. I'm sure yeah, it's there. It's it's like, so, somehow I, I kind of look at these work as, as containing that conversation somehow mm -hmm. and, and, and participating in that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like a, they're, not, they're not referring to it in an in a imitative kind of way. Yeah. It's yeah. more of a, of a kind of contemporary, uh, you know, dialogue. Yeah. Back, yeah. Back and forth. Oh, for example, uh, when I went to Amsterdam to see a man go sort, I was so disappointed in what I saw, except for the drawings. I loved his oh, drawings. Yeah. I thought they were just fabulous. And I see a lot of his drawings. Yeah. In my work, you know, because yeah. I've looked at them so yeah. much, and then yeah. so the, the uh, calligraphic qualities of Franz Hals, you know, yeah. and so I, I feel as if I'm stretching way back, not just the fifties. So I saw a lot of contemporary art right beside uh, stuff from you know the, the golden period of Dutch art, you know, Franz Hals and then that, and I felt it real, and, and then all these tremendous drawings at the mm -hmm. same time, mm -hmm. and. It took me a while to sort of accommodate what I saw, mm -hmm. but I, I became very interested in tone <clears throat> right after that. So I left mm -hmm. a lot of the colors, mm -hmm. and I started, and I, the real thick paint, kind of what I saw in Van Gogh's, that bothered me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I thought, uh, so I, I tried to accommodate those things. Mm -hmm. And it, it took, uh, yeah, a number of years, but slowly in the last four or five years, yeah. I started uh, restricting yeah. myself to just mm -hmm. a few colors. And, and the, the color and the mark making somehow yeah. separate you from sort of what is in the air to actually your personal kind of interest or um, 
tapping into your own ability somehow yeah, more yeah. than, than just sort of paying what happens to be current. Well, I think that's, you know, like you said, I'm approaching 60. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it's, slowly uh, over the years, I've been trying to eliminate what's not mine, you know? Yeah. I sort of, okay, that, that's a dead end road, or I've yeah. explored that road, yeah. and it's not really making a big contribution, so I'm going to just keep the roads that I think bear fruit. Yeah. And and now I'm on a point with just a few colors and uh, a few lines. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It takes so long yeah. to actually start to deal with you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, we have a, I, I love the history of art and I was influenced by so much of it. Yeah. And it's taken me a long time to just you know, work it through. Work it through. Work it through the process. Yeah. Through the machine. Yeah. Through the painting machine. <laughs> Exactly. And it's, a, it's a long, arduous process and it, it takes years and years of work to... Well, but it's paying off. Well, I, I thank you. <laughs>